Hi folks, um, what I've got here is, uh, this is pine, yellow pine. Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of uh, TV shows, articles, whatever on uh, pine cambium, the inner bark of a pine. And uh, I'm going to cut a little bit off right here. And maybe I can dispel a little bit of the myths on this stuff. <clears throat> Here it is. It's uh, it's white in color, um, and it's textured. Um, a lot of places, I mean, a lot of uh, even TV shows <clears throat> have said you can eat this stuff raw. Well, let me tell you what it's like. It's like a piece of leather that's been dipped in. <clears throat> it's like a piece of leather that's been dipped into uh, turpentine. So it's it's like. Uh, it's very bitter and uh, it's uh, and turpentiny in flavor. But that's not the problem. If you can get past that flavor, the the bitter turpentine taste of it, then you have to deal with the fact that the texture of it, which is leather, the consistency of leather. I mean, you can pull strips of it off, and there's you know I've tried this stuff, and I just you just chew on it and chew on it and chew on it. There's you can't really I mean, I can get past the turpentine bitterness, but I can't chew it up enough to uh, to, to break it down enough to be able to swallow it. I mean, it's just uh, <clears throat> it's just like uh, stringy bits of leather, um, and it and you can see how flexible it is there. Um, what this stuff is really good is if you can roast it over a fire. And the uh, the turpentine and bitterness goes out of it. Um, now, when I say roast it, now you can see it's white. Well, if you roast it so that it's brown in color, and you you get it roasted to the point where you can break it off like a wafer, it's just you know um, <clears throat> kind of like a cracker. You know, you break can break pieces off of it. But if it's if it's still bendable like that then uh, it's going to be like leather and, and you just I just can't eat that but <clears throat> once uh, once I roast it all the way through and it takes a long time to roast one of these things all the way through <clears throat> um, so that it's brown in color and it breaks off uh, like a wafer it's really good though it tastes like kind of like uh, only way I know how to describe it is a <clears throat> is a Kind of a sweet nutty flavor, and that's the only way I can describe it. But uh, and once you once I break it off into little pieces, so it breaks off after I've roasted it. Um, it's really good, and it's edible. I mean, for me, it's edible. I can get it down. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, raw, I just chew and chew and chew, and, you, and there's just no way I can get it down. I can't break it up enough by chewing it to get it to be able to get it down. It's just like leather. So, you know, if, uh, you know, these guys on these, these television shows or whatever claim they can eat this stuff raw, more power to them, go at it. You know, I can't do that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, if I, if I roast it, though, there's no problem. But, uh, so that it, it's uh, no longer white, it turns, you, you roast it so that it's brown. And <clears throat> um, then it breaks. And you can break it off into pieces and, and then you can get it down a lot easier. So, you know, that's kind of the, uh, to me it's a myth anyway that, that you can eat this stuff raw. If you can, fine. Maybe you can, maybe there's, maybe uh, you can slice it thin enough to where you can actually get it down. That's a possibility. Otherwise, if it's a thick, thicker piece, which most of them come off as thicker pieces, then it may not be. You know, so maybe I can, maybe you can uh, cut it so that you get these really thin, <clears throat> very, very thin strips, then you might be able to get it down raw. But um, in my experience, um, roasting is better. Really the only way to go for this stuff. So, and uh, yeah, and when I cut it, I just do a strip and I'll leave it um, on the tree and uh, it'll, uh, 
grow back over itself. It'll heal. The tree will. But uh, <clears throat> so I only take maybe one strip from one tree, maybe another strip from another tree in that way, so that way I don't, you know, uh, damage the tree any more than I have to. So, but anyway, um, it's edible. I just prefer it roasted, not raw. Hi folks, um, I talked about uh, pine bark <clears throat> for, uh, well actually pine cambium, which is uh, the, uh, the inner bark of the pine tree. Um, so what I've got is a piece of uh, one I roasted, as you can see, and, and it's, it's good. It's a, it's a roasted, uh, it has that kind of a sweet, nutty flavor. Um, so, and for me, that's edible. Just uh, roast it over a fire. Um, the other thing is pine needle tea, and that's just uh, basically some pine needles that uh, I don't I don't like it strong. Uh, pine needle tea is is not. Uh, not very good strong. I, I like it kind of weak and uh, It's actually not bad If it's not uh, Strong if it's strong then you know you're you're talking about pine salt and your cleaners and stuff like that when you get into pine needle juice, but um, uh, So it, it it's got a lot of vitamin C and it's it's uh It's not bad. It's an acquired taste. Maybe is a better way to put it. So um Like I said, I like mine a little weaker, but it it, it does uh, give you a little bit of flavor to the water, um, and there's really no way for me to describe what it tastes like. <laughs> but it's not really bad. It's bad. It would probably be bad. I've heard people say that that pine needle tea is pretty bad. It um, it can be if you if you make it too strong. Um, so, you know, moderation with it, and, and like I said, it's an acquired taste. Some people might be able to, to stomach it better than others. It's not, it, it doesn't, it's, to me, if it's weaker, it's mild, so it's not so bad. But, and you can do that by, uh, I, I don't use that many pine needles. I use less. Um, uh, the other way is, is if you put, a, put your pine needles in and you boil it for a lot longer time period, then you know, then you might make it stronger that way. So, you know, I prefer to just put it in and just boil it up. Um, the the water will turn a little bit of burn, a little kind of a little brown uh, color to it, which you can see maybe here. Got a little bit of brown color to it. But um, that's pretty much uh, it in a nutshell, right there. Um, for uh, actually, what I'm using here is just yellow pine. Um, probably not the best. Uh, other pines would be better. Maybe uh, uh, sand pine uh, is actually pretty good because it's kind of like a sprucey flavor. Um, so, you know, some pines have a little bit different flavor. Um, yellow pine is not great, but it's it's not bad either. Um, just you know, in moderation, you know, uh, weaker uh, weaker tea is fine. And you know, I think the people that I think it's gotten a bad rap. Uh, as far as uh, pine needle tea has, as far as uh, as uh, um, people not liking it, um, mostly due to the fact that they're making the tea stew too strong. If you make the tea stew too strong, then yeah, it'll it, it could you know uh, be pretty pretty rough on you. Um, another thing is if you make it stronger, um, it actually might help your sinuses. Uh, you know, clear your sinuses up. So if you got a cold, it might not be a bad idea to make a stronger pine needle tea. Um, so anyway, that's kind of uh, what I wanted to cover pines uh, as far as an edible goes, or semi-edible. So anyway, thanks for watching.